And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo, and you're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 68. In this episode, we are covering chapters 32 through 35 from the book King of Scars. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Moi Savienyi Casters! Hello! Woohoo! <laughs> so, we got some listener cities. We do. Mm. First of all, we have Rio Branco, Brazil. Wow. Yes. And then we got Hyder Bad India. And I'm very sorry about that. I did. I, 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 yeah, I did not do that right. Hyderabad. Hyderabad. I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah, that's what happens when you're not prepared. Me, not prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, for those of you asking how you can help, we would greatly appreciate tips. A dollar does go a long way. Your tips will help us to continue to bring you the Grisha cast. You can Venmo a tip to at B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Or cash app dollar sign mm-hmm. B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Also, leaving a review on your podcast platform, liking and following us on our socials, especially YouTube, will help us and it would make us oh so very happy. Oh, so happy. So very happy. Yes. Yes. So we've got to get jumping in there, but before we do... We're almost there, guys. We are. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Like, it's crazy. Yes, next week in less than a week. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh Uh-huh. We're going to be watching Shadow and Bone. Yes, we're going to be finishing King of Scars. We're going to have the new show. Uh, It is so exciting. And I finished Rule of Wolves. You're almost finished with Rule of Wolves. Mm -hmm. Holy jeez. And I will so be posting my prediction that I did before starting the second part, by the way. So fun. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, I love, I'm trying to learn Lenormand cards, which are different than tarot cards. I'm not great at it at all, but I thought it'd be really funny if I tried to predict the end uh, or the second half of Rule of Wolves. So I did that. Um, I got it on. I, I've got on camera. I just haven't published it yet. So um, that'll go out probably today. And um, yeah, we'll see whether it works or not. I still like to be on it. Yeah. We'll just see whether it worked or not. It's so fun. Yeah. Also, we've got some things going on even today that we're going to be working on. So um, when we get those done, we'll link to that too, just in case you're interested. Yes. We love you guys. You guys love us. And we're going to be all around. We are. We're getting around, y'all. We are. We (laughs) sure are. And don't forget, like, seriously, next week is going to be a big week because we're going to be Thursday. We've got the, we're going to be finishing up King of Scars. And then Friday, we're going to be rolling on into our special watch party. Yes. Grisha watch. Binge with us. Yes. We'll talk about more more of that at the end of the show so yes. let's let's get going don't you think girl oh yes we need to jump on in okay so 32 is me right yep yes Ugh. yes she, ma'am you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so chapter 32 is zoya my girl and we're gonna start off with a quote zoya did not scream she stifled her panic as the sap rose over her rib cage and ceased her pounding on the golden sphere. She could not comprehend what she was seeing. Three years ago, she had watched the Darkling's body burn to ash. She had whispered her aunt's name as he had vanished in the heat of Inferni flames beside the body of Sankt Alina. But it had not been Alina Starkov who lay on that pyre, only a girl tailored to look like her. Had the Darkling's supporters used the same trick? She did not understand the extent of what Elizaveta intended, only that Nikolai would not live through it, and that Yuri had betrayed them, the pious little wart. You always knew what he was, she scolded herself. You knew at which altar he chose to worship, but she had ignored him, dismissed him, because she had never truly seen him as a threat, and maybe because she hadn't wanted to see her own foolish idolism reflected in her fervent eyes. 
End quote. So, Zoe pissed. Yeah. She mad. Yeah, we got some stuff going on. It's it's the climax. It's the, yeah, the climax. The, the, the dramatic part. <laughs> the denimal. Mm-hmm. So, Zoya is pissed that she trusted Yuri, um, but is surprised to see that the monster um, actually is attacking him. So, surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She then uses what Juris was teaching her. Um, and concentrates on trying to change the temperature of the sap, which would be something a tide maker normally could do, but not a squalor. And she actually, she she gets it to work, and she shatters her sap sphere. <laughs> you enjoyed me saying that last week. I still <laughs> yes. enjoy saying it this week. Sap sphere. Uh, <laughs> she uses her powers to blow herself up into Juris's spire, because she's like, where, where is Juris? If I did this, I would most likely just letting you know. Since I want to be a squalor, if I tried to like use wind, summon wind, and fly somewhere, like I would hit the wall. Like, there's no way I would be able to like summon wind and then like have it actually like throw be graceful, me- gracefully into the window. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'd sm- smack, smack like a bug. Mm-hmm. That would be me. <laughs> So that actually is going to lead us to our scene because this is a good scene. This is um, with Zoya and Juris. So um, she finds Juris' body. And anyways, you ready for the scene, girl? I am. Okay. Real quick, a special thank you for our background music created by Kendra Dantes yes, and produced by Year 26. So curtain up. Get it. Bring it. Juris, she cried. She slid to her knees beside him. He opened his eyes. They flickered silver, the pupils slitting. That Elizabetta, he said on a wheezing gasp. Such an actress. What happened? What did she do to you? He released a sound that might have been a laugh or a moan. She offered me wine after hundreds of years. Honey mead from fruit born of her vines. She said she had been saving it. It was sweet but it was not wine. She looked at his charred lips, his blackened tongue, and understood it was fuel. Only our own power can destroy us. My flames burned me from the inside. No, Zoya said, no. Her heart was too full of loss. I'll get Grigori. He can heal you. It's too late. Jura seized her wrist with surprising force. Listen to me. We thought we had convinced Elizaveta to give up her power, but that was never her intent. If she breaks free of the bounds of the fold, nothing will be able to control her. You must stop her. How? Zoya pleaded. You know what you must do, Zoya. Where are my bones? She recoiled, but he did not release his grip. Kill me. Take my scales. Zoya shook her head. All she could think of was her aunt's resolute face. Zoya had been responsible for her death. She could have stopped the Darkling if she'd looked closer, if she'd understood, if she hadn't been consumed by her own ambition. He doesn't get to take you from me, too. I am not your aunt, Juris growled. I am your teacher. You were an able student. Prove to me that you are a great one. She could not do it. You said it was a a corruption. Only if you give nothing of yourself in return. The truth of that hit her, and Zoya knew she was afraid. A little faith, Zoya. This is all this requires. A bitter laugh escaped her. I don't have it. There is no end to the power you may obtain. The making at the heart of the world has no limit. It does not weaken. It does not tire. But you must go to meet it. What if I get it wrong all over again? What if she failed Juris as she had failed the others? Her life was crowded with too many ghosts. Stop punishing yourself for being someone with a heart. You cannot protect yourself from suffering. To live is to grieve. You are not protecting yourself by shutting yourself off from the world. You are limiting yourself just as you did with your training. Please, Zoya said. She was the thing she'd always feared becoming. A lost girl, helpless, being led up the aisle of the chapel in Pachana. Don't leave me. Not you too. He nudged his broadsword with one hand. Zoya of the Lost City. Zoya of the Garden. Zoya bleeding in the snow. You are strong enough to survive the fall. 
Juris released a cry that began as a scream and became a roar as his body shifted from man to dragon, bones cracking, scales widening, until each was nearly the size of her palm. He enfolded her in his wings, so gently. Now, Zoya, I can hold on no longer. Zoya released a sob. To live is to grieve. She was a lost girl, and a general too. She hefted the broadsword in her hand, and the power of the storm in her palms drove the blade into his heart. At the same instant, Zoya felt the dragon's claws pierce her chest. She cried out, the pain like the fork of a lightning bolt. Splitting her open, she felt her blood soaking the silk against her body, a sacrifice. Juris released a heavy sigh and shut his glowing eyes. Zoya pressed her face to his scales, listening to the heavy thud of his heart, of her own. Was this death then? She wept for them both as the rhythm began to slow. End scene. Oh. Oh. That was sad. That was sad. Mm Mm-hmm. So Zoya can't believe her teacher is gone. She grabs some weapons off of the wall and then she goes and she like she does what he says. She goes and takes some scales from the ridge of Juris's back. She wonders how this is going to really kind of work because she's not a fabricator. She then remembers Juris telling her that are we not all things? And then Nikolai saying, anything worth doing always starts as a bad idea. She then tries what is very unfamiliar. Here's the quote. She focused on the scales in her hands, sensed their edges, the particles that comprised them. It felt alien and wrong, and she knew instantly that this work would never be natural to her. But in this moment, her meager skill would have to be enough. Zoya let the scales guide her. She could feel the shape they wanted to take. Could she could see it burning clearly in her mind like a black wheel? No, a crown. Juris? Pushy to the last. She shoved the image aside and forced the scales to form two cuffs around her wrists instead. End quote. So take a moment. Um, breathe here for a second. That was just really cool. And um Now we're going to end out the chapter with this last quote. As soon as the scales touched, sealing the bond, she felt Juris's strength flow through her, but this was different than it had been with the tiger. Open the door. She could feel his past. The eons both he and the dragon had lived flooding through her, threatening to overwhelm the short speck of her life. Take it, then, she told him. I am strong enough to survive the fall. She felt Juris's restraint, felt him draw back, protecting her and guiding her as he had done over the past weeks, as he always would. The dragon was with her, and they would fight. End quote in scene. Yeah. I forgot to ask you, girl, would you like me to pour you some tea since you're about to start the next? Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. I just figured I'd, you know. Thanks. Well, you. he's doing that for me because he's so very nice. I will move on to chapter 33, where we follow Nina. Mm. Remember, we left off last week with the guards stopping the wagon full of women and the children that they had rescued. So she sees fishermen over the guard's shoulder, and Nina starts yelling, Help! Help us! While she urges the babies to cry and make a fuss because... Feared and men were like trained almost to protect weak women and children. So she's trying to play on these fishermen's um, feared and hearts. The fishermen come up and they're like, um, what's going on? They demanded to know what was in the wagon. And when they see that it's all pregnant women and babies, they actually become angry, which draws more of a crowd. And that crowd starts to recognize some of the women. They start getting rowdy. And the guard has to shoot a bullet into the air to tell them to calm down. Everybody simmer. Simmer down now. But then there's a big boom. Then another. And another. Leone starts freaking out that her proportions were off. Remember, she was doing the bombs. And everyone realizes that the dam has broken. 
a wall of water starts rushing towards them. Not only are people afraid of drowning, but we also have to remember that the water is poison. So this huge, giant wall of poison water is now flying towards them. Oh, wonderful. That's all. They realize, like, they take off running, but obviously they realize the water is just coming way too quickly. There's no way they're going to get out of the way. So Adric tells everyone to get behind him. As the water comes closer, he parts the water like Moses <laughs> and diverts the water around the crowd while Leone throws her hands up to draw out the poison. Like, this is some really quick Grisha work here. This is, and I love that you were just so Jewish there for a minute with me. <laughs> like, that's something I would totally say. And you just, wow. Well, yeah. That's awesome. I have to do things for you sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, and then a yellow cloud starts appearing <laughs> around Leone, the poison she's drawing out. And while all this is going on, Nina starts kind of secretly working on a plan of her own. Adric blows the poison cloud into a guardhouse and slams the door. As the waters recede, everyone sees a giant ash tree that now stood in the center of the road that wasn't there before. Hmm. When they look closer, they realize the ash tree is made of bone. Nina had constructed it out of the bones of the girls lost to the mountain. Oh, well... (laughs) The fishermen asked everyone to lay down their arms because they have seen some miracles today. Yes. And Nina shouts, praise Jell and the new saints. The end. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Whew. Bone tree. Bone tree. So I gave you a little cream. Thank but I didn't you. do the monk fruit. I oh. figured you'd do. Okay, thanks. I didn't, I didn't know how many lumps you'd like. <laughs> I wish they had lumps of monk fruit. That would be great. We could be fancy. We'd have little tongs, the little sugar tongs. Oh, my God. Fantasy. I know. We could live the full fantasy. I hope you all enjoy (laughs) doing tea with us. I I don't think you do, but we do this every (laughs) single episode, and it's just so much fun for us. So Being fancy. Join in if you'd like to. I mean, come on. Alex did. Mm. Tell us what your favorite tea is we'll, yeah. we'll give it a shot have some tea time with us tea time tea for two well <laughs> then it's more for tea for three okay so, so we're gonna move on <laughs> i got chapter 34 right yeah yes Good. okay so it's zoya again what a surprise Ooh. so uh, we start off with a quote zoya sped across the sands praying she was not too late she had once thought only a grisha in the grip of parem could fly now she arrived on the storm borne aloft by thunderheads it was almost as if she could feel juris beneath her the sight that greeted her was horrifying gregory had spread himself over the thornwood in a great dome built and rebuilt of sinew trying to keep Elizaveta and Yuri away from Nikolai and his shadow self. Zoya saw Elizaveta's thorn stabbing through Gregory's flesh, her stalks withering like serpents, lashing out to puncture him again and again. But when the body maker began to scream, Zoya realized it was not the thorns that had undone him, but the insects Elizaveta had set upon his body. Tiny holes and furrows began to appear on his flesh as burrowing insects consumed him. His body broke apart, trying to escape itself. He shook and trembled and then opened a thousand mouths to cry as he was devoured. End quote. Graphic. Yeah, very graphic. Like, what's that phobia of holes? If you have that, (laughs) beware. (laughs) What is that? It's like, it starts with a T. No, it's, there's an, act, yeah. <laughs> it starts with a T, I think. Anyway. Yeah, that is crazy. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Eric's wow. lost in thought now. Yeah, and I'm, because now I'm trying to remember, like, there was a show or something that it was recently brought up on, or maybe, like, the past couple years, like, it's like, <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, you find that out. Let us know. And, um. Trip, tripophobia. 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 Aversion to the sight of irregular patterns or clusters of small holes or bumps. Oh, okay. I think it was American Horror Story. Yes, that makes sense. That 
There was, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. That is, and see, I, I've never understood that, but watching that show when, like, they zoomed in on those things, that really kind of did freak me out. Like, it, it was really weird. I think there were, like, times where they zoomed in on, like, the hives and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, beehives. Um, supposedly it's an evolutionary response to things that are associated with disease or danger, like disease, skin, parasites, and other infectious conditions. And I am so sorry if you guys have trypophobia, and I'm just keep on talking about it. I'll stop now. Yeah, and <laughs> this poor body maker, um, Grigori, has just been, he's trying to escape, but he can't because yeah. she's just, Lizaveta obviously is not a good saint. She's mean. Yes. She's just, I mean. But then does that go back to what do you consider a saint and what doesn't be, I mean. Well, girl, you so have. A, there's I, that. I did get you your birthday present. Yes. So I can't wait for you to read. I'm but you probably did. Like, there's a lot. Her story is out there a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's crazy because you read her story and you feel bad for her. But then you read this book and you're like, what? I don't know. So, anyways, but I love that book. Okay, so Elisabetta tells Zoya that she has been preserving the Darkland's body in her hive. Not creepy at all. <laughs> Not she just, at all. Just bring him on into the hive, and that he will soon inhabit that preserved body again. She says she would have never sacrificed her power for mortality. So she's pretty much just like. I tricked you all. I can't believe you guys all fell for the fact that I would, like, want to be human again. <laughs> yeah. So, Zoya looks at the Darkling's body, and it brings back the hatred and anger she has for just everything about him. And here's a quote. Burn as you were meant to, Zoya whispered. She thrust her arm down, and as easily as if she were summoning a soft breeze, lightning flowed in a precise ear-splitting crack. It struck the beer in a blaze of sparks and blooming flame. Zoya saw a shadow emerge from the fire, as if trying to flee the heat. What have you done? Elisabetta screamed. She hurtled at... The darkling, as the thornwood tried to lift him to safety away from the blaze, but Zoya focused the heat of her flames until they burned blue as Juris's dragon fire. The thornwood began to collapse in on itself. End quote. So Zoya is able to control fire, just as Juris was teaching her as well. So she's like, she's really getting it. Elizabeth. Elisabetta hurls herself over the Darkling's body, trying to save it. Uh, Yuri tries to run away, but Zoya's like, uh-uh. And she grabs that man and um, the glowing thorn that he has and traps him in, like, two sand dunes. The shadow monster is fading right now, but is it's between Nikolai and... And the darklings, like, so, like, it's in this really weird spot. Zoya takes the thorn and puts it back into where the shadow's heart should have been. Nikolai is barely alive, but tells Zoya to take it out of him. She does as Nikolai screams. Here's a quote. All around her, the thornwood burst into bloom as Elisabetta rose, shrieking from the darkling's final funeral pyre. She was a swarm of bees. <laughs> she was a meadow in blossom. She was a woman mad with grief. The thornwood twisted around Zoya's twists, binding her tight as Eliz Elisabetta hurtled toward her, locusts streaming from her mouth, her hands extended, reaching Zoya's throat. It's all right, Zoya thought. I saved Nikolai. I kept Elisabetta confined to the fold. She had stopped the darkling at last, but Elisabetta take her heart. But Juris's voice roared within her, and she could almost see his sneer. I gave up my scales for this? We are the dragon. We do not lie down to die. Zoya felt the branches squeeze tighter. The thornwood would was Elisabetta's creation, but the sap within it flowed like blood, like a river moved by tides. Elisabetta screamed her rage, and the buzz of insects filled Zoya's ears. Zoya focused on the sap running through the branches of the thornwood, the sap that had drowned her again and again, and she pulled. 
The stalks turned, the vicious spikes of their thorns jutting toward Elisabetta too quickly for her to change course or shift form. Her body struck the lances of the thorns with a dull, wet thud. She hung, bare inches from Zoya, impaled on the claws of her own creation. Zoya twisted the thorns and watched the light vanish from Elisabetta's eyes. She could have sworn she heard the dragon snarl his approval. Ravka might fall. The Grisha and the Second Army might scatter, but the world would be safe from Elisabetta and the Starless One. She thought of the cubs in the snow, of Liliana shelling hazelnuts by the fire, of the hall of the Golden Dome back at the little palace, crowded with Grisha, laughter echoing off its walls before the Darkling attacked. She thought of Nikolai facing the demon, the thorn like a dagger in his hands. This time I saved you, she thought as she collapsed. This time I got it right. End quote. End chapter. Ooh. Yeah. So at least we got Miss Beehive gone. Yes. That is Lord, uh, she, frightening. <laughs> she was driving me nuts. Yes. She's a little annoying. Well, and she was just so weird. And yes. just like, I mean, I don't know. She, I was just ready for her to go. Her and her bugs. <laughs> yes. Her and her bugs can go. Um, so the scene that we have next is mm. um, right at the beginning of this chapter. Chapter 35 oh. is Nina. Um, after getting everyone to safety from the poison Moses River, um, Nina turns to Hana, who surprisingly isn't mad. And we have a chapter or like we have a scene with that. It's a short little scene, but um, knowing what's coming, it's important for the storyline. Absolutely, girl. Okay. So Eric is going to be playing Hana. I'm going to be playing Nina. And again, a special thank you for background music created by Kendra Dantes and produced by Year 26. Mm -hmm. Okay. Curtain up. (laughs) I haven't been asking the right questions, have I? I asked what you were, not who. Nina had changed back into one of Mila's dresses. She smoothed her hands over the heavy skirts. I think you know. Nina Zenik. Hana's copper eyes were hard. The girl who maimed my father? The corpse witch? Is that what the Fjordans are calling me now? Among other things. I'm an agent working for the Rothkin government. I came to this country to free people like you. People with Grisha power living in fear. Why didn't my father recognize you? Hana asked. I was tailored before I came here. This, Hana said, gesturing to herself, isn't me. Is anything about you real? The skills I taught you. Everything I told you about the way this country works, about the corruption at its core. Nina took a breath and tapped her hand to her heart. This is real, Hana. Hana looked away. You used me. I did, said Nina. I won't deny it. Hana's gaze swung back to Nina. She folded her arms. You're not sorry, are you? I'm sorry for the hurt I caused. I'm sorry to have lost your trust. But we are soldiers, Hana, warriors born, and we do what we have to be. We do what has to be done. There are lives at stake. There still are. I don't believe this is the only place where your father's men are experimenting on Grisha. Hana swallowed, and Nina knew she was remembering the girls in their beds on the ward, the babies in the cribs, their suffering. There are more. More bases, more factories, more laboratories. I won't pretend that all Grisha are good, or all Rothkins. They aren't. Maybe I'm not. All I know is that your father and his men, what they're doing is wrong. They have to be stopped. She laid her hand on Hana's shoulder, afraid she might pull away. We could stop them. Hana looked up at the factory, at the wagon full of prisoners, at the great ash towering over the road with its finger bone branches. She ran a hand over her shorn scalp, the stubborn lines of her face more pronounced without the thick cloud of her hair to soften them. When her gaze returned to Nina, there was new fire in her eyes. Save them all, she said. Despite the sorrows and dangers of the day, Despite the challenges that lay ahead, Nina felt a new lightness take over her. Save them all. But Nina, Hannah said, no more lies. No more lies, she agreed. 
and Nina wished with all her heart that could be true. What do we do first, asked Hana. We see to your father. I won't kill him. Nina felt a smile curling her lips. That is the very last thing I'd have you do. Insane. <sighs> yes, that was that was dramatic. It girl. was dramatic. So now Hana knows who Nina is, mm-hmm. and Hana doesn't seem to be very mad. And she um, comes around, and she agrees to help Nina save everybody. So woo! It's so, so weird. So exciting. To, so weird to read this in. If you're reading Rule of Wolves. Yes. Sorry. Yes. I'm just like, Again, this wow. is very important to the it build is. up to everything. I just so. like, <laughs> I'm like, whew. Okay. All right. So now that I, because before when I hadn't read anything, I didn't know what to pick out as to like what would be important. But now that I've read to the end of the series and I'm like, all Over. right, well, now I kind of know what's going on here. So, mm-hmm. so as Hannah is dragging her unconscious father up the hill, Nina talks to Adric. He calls her out for rigging the explosives to blow the dam, oops, and putting them in a horrible situation. Nina, of course, is not sorry because she thinks it's better for the Fjordans to see them as saints. So this is kind of going along with her plan with like, yay, the saints, like Saint Adric, uh, Saint Leone. She wants the Fjordans to see Grisha as saints. They're already calling Adric and Leone saints at this point, like all the Fjordans are. Sanct Leone of the Waters and Saint Adric the Uneven. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Oops. So the when, uneven. when Adric says it's time to go, she tells him about a letter talking about an assassination attempt against the king. The le- that the Lansoff wouldn't be a problem for someone named Demidov. Oh, Ooh. I wonder where I've heard that before. Yes. Mm-mm. He is mad. Adric is mad that Nina kept this to herself for an entire freaking day. Mm. But, um, oh, well, you only answer to that once you're back in Ravka. Yeah. That's when Nina tells him she's not going back. She says, I know what I have to do, and I won't get a chance like this again. Ravka made me a soldier. Ketterdam made me a spy. Hana can help me become something else entirely. Adric is like, yo, uh, we will have access to you all the way over here, and you won't have any way out. And she responds, then I'll just have to blow a hole in the wall. End of chapter. Wow. Nina is coming into herself. She sure is. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. That's my girl. It is. And next week, we're going to just finish off that book, oh, no. too. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yes. So, oh, crazy. All right. Okay. Well, it's that time. <laughs> Grisha Cast News. Okay. So... There's a lot of news. Um, There's just a lot of stuff going Uh on. Some of it you'll know. Some of it you won't. Um, So Shadow and Bone, the after party, released a small, I guess, like a little trailer on Netflix um, for the after party show. And um, there were new show stills that got released on the 12th of April. And I'm I'm sure if you've been paying attention, yeah, we we keep on seeing new stuff. And that's just... Awesome. We have a new picture of um, Nina and Matthias on the I, ship. Yeah. Where she's I like. Love it. Yes. Love uh, it. Love, love, love. Obviously, and, uh, that's one of my favorite storylines. So well, of course, I pay attention to that. Some other stills we're also getting are like, I mean, we're seeing more of the Keftas. Like, yes. Um, they're like, and I don't know if I've zoomed in on them. So there, I don't know. There's one of. It's Alina and then two other Ethereal-Kai. Um, and they're sitting at like a table or something. Yes. Okay. So they're all wearing the blue robe, but they all belong to a different suborder. Uh-huh. If you look at it, like what's really cool is like, so like the Inferni, the red, it looks like flames. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I love that. Like, that's, that's some cool stuff. Yes. I mean. And that. That's amazing. Oh, I can't say anything. Girl, okay, sorry. That I don't know how you've done this this whole time, knowing the whole story. <laughs> Girl, I'm I know, ju- right? Because I've just gotten to this point, and I want to say so much, and then I realized I can't. Okay, never mind. 
Moving on. Yeah, girl. What this is what I've been doing since October 2019. Bless your heart. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I am I have failed. I or I've almost failed multiple times. It's hard. It is very it hard. It is very hard. When like girl, you should like goodness. Just imagine me <laughs> I just can't. and you hadn't even read six of From Crows. The beginning yet. you had to do that. Woo. All right. Yes. It's hard to hold some stuff back. It is. There is some stuff still you don't know because you haven't read The Lives of Saints. Yes, And correct. you haven't read Language of Thorns, which has got some very interesting, awesome stuff in it. Yes. So we'll be getting to that. But um, yeah, girl, feel my pain. I'm feeling it's, it. Mm, yeah, it ain't fun. Okay, so let's see what else we got. There was, I guess there was an interview with Cosmopolitan and then... Five things you need to know from Daily Motion actually released on April 2nd, but not noticed until the 12th. <laughs> so they're just kind of telling you different things you need to know. They're trying to get everybody that doesn't know about the Grishaverse ready for it. And, you know, um, all the stuff we already know. Mm-hmm. Um, so many fan accounts. Um, yeah. And, oh, I saw this. Um, they did like, if you have like Apple music or anything, they did have like the soundtrack kind of come out. It's just one song, but it's available where that first, um, it's called Ravka and it is the song that I believe they played for us during like, it was, um, the New York comic con and said it was going to be the opening. I believe that's what it was, but it's changed quite a bit since then. And they told us then that, like, that was not, like, for sure. It wasn't completely edited. Hmm. But um, it's called Ravka, and, um, yeah, it's on Spotify. I'm listening to it on Apple. Um, So it's just, hey, we're getting some more stuff, more information. And let's see, just more clips. Um, And, yeah, more stuff is going to keep coming. And we have a... We've got someone to thank. We had a listener, right? We do. Oh, we want so to nice. thank Filson from Sweden for your very sweet email. Thank you oh. so much. It touched our hearts. That is awesome. Yes, and I, I think we all, like, it's so nice when we hear from you guys. Yes. Um, it just means a lot because we kind of sit here in front of a microphone, and yes, we enjoy talking to one, one another. Um, she's my best friend, but... It's nice to know that there's people out there that enjoy this too. It Be- is. Because we started out like, I mean, we are a really small fandom that we got to stick together because we're we're about to kind of hopefully get pretty big. We're going to expand like the fold, y'all. Yes, we are. So that brings me to talking about next week. So first off, just finish the rest of King of Scar. Woo! And we're going to cover that on Thursday. And... Then Friday, I'm sorry, we're not, we're going to cover that. We will be recording that. It will come out Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh-huh. you get, yeah, you're going to get a double thingy Friday. You're going to be able to get the podcast. And then that evening is Grisha Watch. A Grisha cast double dose. Yes, where we have teamed up with Grisha Circus Discord, which is so exciting. Um, we are we're doing our, our own Netflix and chill of Shadow and Bone <laughs> premiere watch party marathon. So Something like that. Yeah. And it's not gonna be a whole lot of chill in. No. But it's a cool way for people all over to be able to watch together and comment. Cause I know that f- specifically like when I was reading these books, like it it's very hard to find other people that know anything about the Grishaverse. Mm-hmm. So the so show is very exciting. With us. Exactly. So we are getting on the Discord app. So download that. You can go on your computer. You can go on your phone. And um, after you download that, go to grishacast.com. And you will go to, I think you'll scroll down a little bit, and I'll say links from the show. Click on that. And then you will have a link right there that says Grisha Clown Verse or Grisha Circus Verse. One, they, uh, yeah. One of those. Yeah, Grisha, Grisha Circuit. Clown. Cir- clown. Yeah. 
clown. Because circus is the thing that's in there, but it's the clown verse. And what that's going to do- <laughs> We're old, y'all. Is that is giving you an invitation, like it's your own private invitation into this amazing mm-hmm. world of that Discord ha- that they- they've created. It's It's really cool. Seriously, there's all these different channels of different topics about the Grishaverse that you can go in and talk about just anything, any time of the day. So we, um, we've we coordinated with them. So we are having, yeah, we're having a watch party. That night, we're going to have a little pre, pre-show. pre we got some entertainment. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. So ours, so it's um, 7 Central our time. Mm-hmm. 7 Central. Um, it's eight Eastern. Eastern. Thank you. Eight Eastern, and that is what time the pre-show starts. It's only going to be thirty minutes. It's going to be just some entertainment for you. We got some musical guests, and then we got um, some shenanigans that you know me and Terry, of course, will do. And then just a little short little discussion before we get to the countdown, and we're gonna literally just like countdown to pressing play and. Boom. There we go. Mm-hmm. And we will watch it. And every episode will have a different channel. So there's no spoilers or anything. And we'll have little breaks in between. So if you are hardcore and can make it, we we're watching the entire thing that night. If you can't, don't worry about it. If you fall asleep, it'll be there in the morning. But there are some of us that plan on watching the entire thing all the way through. Yes. So, <laughs> anyways, that's what it, it's set up for. And we do have some fun stuff scheduled for Sunday that we will let you know a little bit closer to. Um, we're calling it the Ketterdam Brunch. And pretty much giving you guys some time to relax and sleep. And then we're going to discuss what we thought of the show with some fun stuff, you know? And then... um. And then, hey, what does Grisha Cast do? Well, we are taking a break from the literature, and we are going to every week start doing one episode. Yes, that'll give y'all time to read through Rule of Wolves, mm-hmm. um, so there won't be any spoilers, and you can kind of um, rehash with us. But that'll give everyone a time to catch up with that, and then we can really focus on the show and compare it yes. to the books and talk about all the new stuff, and it's going to be so exciting, because that is literally like one of my favorite things to do ever. Yes, and I believe um, Discord is teaming up, so they're, they're going to be d- Thursday night. They're going to be having a watch party, I guess, every week of the episode. And then that next Friday will be the discussion where we'll be putting out the podcast about about that episode. So it's going to be cool. We're going to have fun. We've all been waiting for this moment for so long, and it's just neat that it's finally here. Mm-hmm. So anyways, um, okay, well, I don't think I got anything else, girl. What about you? I do not. Ugh. Well, it has been great. I can't believe we're here a week away. And um, yes. So, oh, by the way, <clears throat> I'm wearing my Grishaverse merch, which Woo-hoo. is um, from the New York City Comic Con. I got my um, Ethereal Kai shirt. Yes. yes. And I would show you the back, but I've got <laughs> headphones in and I would probably like do some strength yes. on it myself. Yeah, but let's not do that. Don't worry. Anyways. It's been great, guys. Yay. We'll see you next week. Love Bye. ya. Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. A plus. No, no mourners. mourners. No funeral. This has been Grisha Cast. Connect with us on the web at grishacast.com. Send an email to info at grishacast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok at Grisha Cast.